Welcome to this day for this Wednesday, May 3rd. I'm Paul Ortiz filling in for vacationing Lisa Hart for a couple more days. We have a great program for you today. We're going to be talking to Healing Hearts Emergency Animal Hospital. They're located right around the corner from us on Colorado, and we're going to be talking to Stephanie Yoon, and of course she has Gizmo with her as well. And we're going to be talking to Cindy Hauschier. She's with uh, the Shalom Club, and they're having a terrific event that's going to be May 7th. That's this Sunday. And then we're also going to be talking about some of the wonderful activities that they have over there. Well, we only have one meeting for you today. That's going to be at 1.30 this afternoon. That is our GRF Compliance Ad Hoc Committee. And they will be meeting in the Sycamore Room. That's located on the second floor right here in your community center. And also we're going to be telling you about, you know, what our weather's going to be looking at, lo looking like. Beautiful out there right now if you're watching our live program at about 9.01 in the morning. Uh, great skies out there, beautiful cloudy skies, but it uh, looks like we're going to have some rain probably tomorrow. Temperatures, as you can see, are well into the low 60s and then a little chillier as we get into Saturday and then hopefully some sun on Sunday, but some great temperatures for the next couple of days. So uh, nice time to get out there, play some tennis, play some pickleball and play around the golf as well. Let's take a look at that sunrise and sunset. Some beautiful sunrises, of course, and early in the morning, 6.01 this morning and some wonderful sunsets that we've had the last couple of ev evenings as it starts to clear. It's gonna be uh, sunsetting this evening at 7.35 p.m. and hopefully we'll get some beautiful uh, sunsets like that one that we had just a couple of days ago. Well, we always wanna encourage you before we get to our break that you wanna keep you informed and this is our stay informed segment. If you can look for ways to reduce clutter save paper and cut costs, here's an upcoming opportunity. And this is Senate Bill 392, which mandates that associations deliver a document in accordance with members' preferred delivery. So basically this new bill, Bill 392, will enable residents to tell management, all you need to do is email us at information at vmsinc.org that your preferred delivery is now electronic, which means through your email. This will save us not only in printing costs, but it's also going to save you in postage. And we were talking to Siobhan Foster yesterday regarding this, and she's our CEO. And uh, it's going to save you about $7.50 for every person that signs up. So if we have 12,000 plus people sign up at $7.50, you're going to save the community a considerable amount of money. So look for that as that mailing goes out to you. There's a form to fill out. And then you can also email them and, uh, at information at VMS inc.org or you can come on into the community center and drop it off as well and make it attention to the general manager's office a great way for our community to save some money and save some trees at the same time we'll be back with our healing hearts emergency animal hospital right after this Achieve a level of comfort you've never known before. The Daydreamer will take you through smooth movements and guide you effortlessly into your favorite positions. Adjust the power pillow for ideal support for your head and neck. This and our positioning technology allows for infinite relaxation. Lay back in zero gravity while watching TV and put your body and mind at ease. Lift your spirits and find your favorite daydream. Contact your local Golden Retailer today. Welcome to Harvard Eye Associates. We're focused on your eye care at all three of our Orange County locations. Our new location in Laguna Hills, Orange, and San Clemente. Each facility features the latest in advanced technology and diagnostic equipment. And a trusted collection of doctors that care about your vision and your quality of life. We deliver what matters to you and your family. Harvard Eye Associates, the future of vision today. At Healing Hearts Emergency Animal Hospital, we are dedicated to emergency veterinary care through high quality veterinary services and compassion. We offer state-of-the-art diagnostics at competitive pricing. Our doctors will see and care for dogs, cats, and most exotics. 
In case of emergency, rest assured Healing Hearts Emergency is here for you when your primary veterinarian is closed. Open nights, weekends, and all major holidays. Well, joining us on the program now is Stephanie, and you're with Healing Hearts Emergency Animal Hospital. Thanks for joining us today on the program. You've been on the show a couple of times now. Uh, just once, other. Okay. Yeah. Well, welcome back. Thank you. Now, you are uh, just located just around the corner on Carlotta, so it's pretty close to our community. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And we're happy to support the community. And, yeah. Tell us, uh, what kind of uh, services do you provide there? We're strictly emergency, uh -huh. so we see we're open when your regular vet is closed. Okay. And so when there's something really bad happening, um, you know, to your pet in the middle of the night, yeah. you can just come on in. You don't even have to call and give us a warning. There's um, someone there all the we're time. At night. Wow. Um, so we're open, like I said, when your oh. regular vet's closed. So right. Monday through Thursday, 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. Right. is our hours. And then Friday we open at 6 p.m. and we don't close until Monday morning, 8 a.m. Wow. Um, and you know we're we're here to do anything as far as like ear cleanings all the way up mm -hmm. to the critical surgery right. cases. When, when your animal eats something they're not supposed to, right. and or, their stomach is not yeah. doing so well. Right? Yeah, or gets attacked yeah. by a coyote, right. or you know bit by a rattlesnake. Yeah. We're there. Speaking of rattlesnakes, you have a, a new associate veterinarian over there, and we, we were going to talk to him a little bit, um, and hopefully we get a chance to meet him soon. But yeah. we were going to talk about you know the rattlesnakes that are out there when people are especially yeah. walking their dogs, right? So right now is prime rattlesnake season. Yeah. So when the weather changes from the cold, um, misty, rainy kind of situation mm -hmm. and goes to hot, dry, humid heat, um, that's when the rattlesnakes really come out. Yeah. And you, they're under leaves, they're under rocks. You won't necessarily know. So when your dog goes under that bush and comes out yelping, a lot of people assume, oh, it could be a bee sting. It may not. Right. It may be worse. That's so, something much worse. Yeah, so we definitely recommend always have them check it, checked mm -hmm. out if they ever do that, go into a bush or go, you know, looking through leaves and all of a sudden they yelp and come back out to you. Mm -hmm. We recommend that you get into your regular vet just for a quick checkup, just to make sure, or even bring them into emergency if we're open. Wow. Just to make sure that nothing happened, they don't have a little puncture mark that might cause a problem. Yeah. Um, because they do have a pretty serious reaction to the venom. What kind of symptoms would they have? Would they become real lethargic? Or? Real lethargic, um, it's definitely a pain response. And right. then within the first hour, you generally start seeing local swelling. Uh -huh. And then the swelling gets worse and worse. Um, right. And then it can you know, progress into yeah. respiratory issues and things of that nature. And I would imagine it would affect smaller dogs more so than larger dogs. No, nope. No, Equal. it's pretty much the same. It's about oh, the wow. same. So the level of care and the level of treatment is about the same for mm -hmm. a large dog versus a small dog. It doesn't yeah. matter the amount of venom. It could be just a small, teeny amount. Right. It's how the body responds to yeah. it. And what do you suggest for people that are walking their dogs? I see, I see some people walking their dogs and it seems like their leash is about 50 yards long. It should shouldn't it be like within a, about we ten feet or so? We usually recommend ten ten feet yeah. is like the max. I mean, I know you um, want to see the animal kind of get away, but yet you still have yeah. control. But sometimes the yeah, retractable leashes can can be great right. for you know giving them the area to run. Freedom. But um, when it comes to walking, you always want to be very aware of your surroundings. Right. So there are coyotes out there, your, your dog's 15, 20 feet away from you, mm -hmm. and what you, you can't pull them back fast no. enough if you see right. a coyote coming and attacking, mm -hmm. um, or with you're a rattlesnake. You're just encouraging you know? danger sometimes, too, especially yeah. if you're walking trails, or even, you know, sometimes I see people walking through parking lots, Yeah. and it just takes a car, you know, dogs 20 yards away, mm -hmm. and a car to come around the corner, because yeah. they see you, but they won't see the dog that's on the ground. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So it's definitely something where I say just be a you know a very aware mm -hmm. parent when you're walking your babies. Even cats go out on leashes. Yeah. So those are something I would never recommend a retractable leash on a cat because no. they jump and they go up and over and round things, and then you're trying to pull a cat through a bush doesn't work very well. Yeah. Um, but you know standard leashes. This is about a six and a half to seven foot leash. Uh -huh. um, these are very safe to be walking with your pet because you can physically see what's around, mm -hmm. what they're getting into, um, and it helps decrease the amount of emergency risk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are the challenges 
with walking a cat compared to a dog, other than they, it's not very common. It's not very common, but they, they're not followers, they're leaders. <laughs> That's the way I like to They're say very it. Very independent. It's, it's their world. We mm -hmm. live in it, yeah. and so very much so, they they go the way you don't want them to. Right. Um, but it is trainable. Um, both Lisa's cats are trained on harnesses and go out mm -hmm. for leash walks twice a day. Um, but we recommend that they don't go out during dusk or dawn. Uh -huh. Those are prime hunting times. Mm -hmm. um, it's also time for them to try and hunt as well. So it can definitely increase the risk as far as coyote attacks, rattlesnake attacks, right. things of that nature. And walking your animal is really important because a lot of people, you know, they're, they're, everyone has dogs inside the house now, right? Mm -hmm. When we grew sometimes the older people, we grew up dogs were outside in the backyard all the time, but now mm -hmm. everybody's dogs in the house. Mm -hmm. But you would need to give them the exercise yeah. that they need mm -hmm. to get out. And, and of course, the, to explore too, because they get a kick out of getting out of the house and mm -hmm. enjoying the, the outdoors as well. Exactly. So it is important for not only you mm -hmm. to have that sociability with your animal, but that you're both walking as well. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it's great enrichment. Uh -huh. So that's the thing that people forget. Domestic animals need the enrichment as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they used to be hunters. They don't do it so much anymore. But right. if you don't want to be attacked in your bed at 2 o'clock in the morning by a kitten, <laughs> highly recommend you, uh, you play with them with lots of toys in right. the house. Take them on those adventures. Um, you know, um, basically exhaust them mentally, mm -hmm. and then they're going to be perfect animals for right. you. Right, yeah. I, we have a dog at home, and, and we've been walking him quite a bit lately mm -hmm. now that the weather is a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it changes their personality, and, yeah. and it keeps them busy. So yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It calms them down. You don't see as much anxiety. Right. So you're okay. located just down the street on Carlotta, and yep. your office hours are, you know, when veterinarian, uh, other uh, animal uh hospitals and yeah. things like that, or maybe your vet is uh, no longer available and you help people with emergencies mostly, right? Mm -hmm. what, what do you see mostly um, during when this, people come in? During this time, we're seeing a lot of coyote attacks. Yeah. Uh, we see rattlesnake attacks right now mm -hmm. during this. This usually April through June mm -hmm. is big time rattlesnake, coyote, and heat stroke. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize as it's getting hotter outside, it's getting hotter for them too. Right. Um, so, you know, where you used to be able to keep them out outside, um, you know, while you're at work all day, well, if it's 90 to 100 degrees for us, that's increasing their body temperature by five to seven degrees. Wow. Where are you going, mister? <laughs> almost came off. Silly and, and, you know, animals can't wear sunblock, so it's important, too, that, you know, we don't bring them out when it's super hot. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And they, by panting, by drinking water, that's how they cool down. Right. They don't generally submerge themselves in water or have an AC unit, mm -hmm. but that's what our domestic animals are used to now. So right. we do have to just be cognizant of that. Like, if you're at work for eight to 12 hours, they shouldn't be outside by themselves right. without some sort of sunblock, um, you know, like patio covering, right. um, maybe a mister outside to help decrease the temperature wherever they're located. Or especially in your car. Mm, especially in the car. Yeah, I've Please. seen that. It's just, even in winter, it's yeah. not safe to leave in the car. Right. Um, even if it's running with the AC, the AC is not strong enough yeah. to keep their temperature it's down. It's a warm day. It's still mm -hmm. really hot in that vehicle. So yeah. we encourage people not to, you know, if you're going to take your, your animal for a walk and you have to get to the store or something like that, you know, mm -hmm. at least uh, nowadays a lot of these um, stores will actually let you bring your, your animal with you. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Post, yeah, and you can always check that. online, yeah. um, you know, most, or even just check as you're coming into the, the place, like Home Depot is great. Yeah. Most grocery stores will let you bring yeah, your no. pets in now. It's yeah. just, that shocks me. Yes. Um, but, you know, there's Walmart, Target, yeah. they allow pets. So yeah. it's better to take them in for that five, quick five minute, just yeah. need one thing than it is to leave them in the yeah. car. My dog weighs about 150 to 160 pounds, so we don't take him to the store very often. Um, I have an 87-pound Labrador yeah. Retriever right. mix, um, and I also have a 53-pound wow. uh, Boxer, and they both come into the yeah. stores with me. Yeah. Um, and it's that's just a training thing to get them used to exactly. people and experiences, but it's worth it when you're not thinking about the emergency they can walk into right. if they're in the car. Right. Well, thanks so much for joining us on the program. We've got yeah. some great information today. We want to encourage our residents that... When you're out there walking your pets, whether it's a cat like Gizmo or a dog, 
Uh, the other thing is to bring in like a, a can that makes noise if the coyotes are out, especially in our part of the neighborhoods. Um, there's a lot of coyotes out there and just, you know, you just want to startle them and they will kind of mm -hmm. take off and yeah. it helps you at least uh, get some clearance when uh, yeah. they're looking around. So thanks yeah. so much for joining us on the program. You're just Thank around you. the corner from us on Carlotta. I did want and to mention that we do have a new associate doctor with yeah. us. So mm -hmm. if they come in, most of, the, most of the residents from Laguna Woods have been used to seeing Dr. Bershauer. Right. Um, now they may see Dr. Sue Pants. Great. Um, but he's an amazing doctor, been in the field a very long time, and he's very knowledgeable. So right. we have the comfort that he'll take care of everybody just like Dr. Bershauer will. Yeah. Thanks so much for being yeah. on the program. And Thank you. thanks for supporting our program. Yeah. Gizmo, thanks for coming in once again today. <laughs> Perks <laughs> out. Hey, we'll be back with more of our program. We'll be talking to the Shalom Club right after this. The Salvation Army Orange County is committed to building hope in people's lives rather than just more shelters. The Center of Hope, a comprehensive homeless care solution, combines a 325-bed emergency shelter, 72 permanent supportive housing apartments, on-site medical, dental, vision, and mental health care, and an award-winning drug and alcohol rehabilitation center. Donate today to transform lives, create safer neighborhoods, and provide an opportunity to end chronic homelessness in Orange County. The California Attorney General, Ron Bonta, issued a consumer alert on hearing aids sold over the counter or online. Quote, while hearing aids sold online or over the counter may appear to be more cost effective than traditional hearing aids, they may not properly address your particular hearing loss needs or they may be outright scams. He goes on to say, get checked by a licensed hearing professional and beware of misleading claims. Call Advanced Ear Care today for answers on over the counter hearing aids and options. Tell them Stewart Center. Living and learning in Laguna Woods Village is a unique experience. For over 45 years, the Emeritus Institute has provided tuition-free college classes within your community. Join us to experience expert faculty, quality academics, and to make friends through the Emeritus Institute. New classes start every semester, and you can join nearly any time. Visit us anytime at saddleback.edu slash emeritus. Learn, live, and thrive with the Emeritus Institute. Life, a series of moments. A touch, a look, a laugh. Successful people. It might not be superior imagination. It just might be superior retirement planning. Imagine what's next. Plan today, own tomorrow. Well, joining us now is our good friend from the Shalom Club, Cindy Hauser. Thanks for joining us today on the program. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about your event first, because I know that's the big thing that we really want to oh, talk about. That's going to be on May 7th. That's coming up this weekend. Yes. And this is going to be a terrific time to get a lot of people together and enjoy a wonderful time. Who doesn't like dancing? Exactly. So it's really fun, and we have three different uh, kinds of programming mm -hmm. for that. Um, what's great is there's going to be a demonstration of uh, square dancing by members of the Village Square Dancing Club. And what's interesting is it's really far more complex than people think because it's healthy for our body and mind, helps you focus and feel fully engaged and mm -hmm. your brain is working nonstop. So square dancing is great. Then we have the round dancing and that's choreographed by ballroom dancing couples. And uh, teaching line dancing is a gentleman named uh, Mel uh, Brannon. Um, not only is the caller for square dancing, but is uh, an exceptional dance instructor. And he'll be teaching uh, that as well. So we have three different types of dancing on Sunday. It'll be fun. That sounds like a lot of fun. It's going to be yeah. on a Sunday afternoon. So yes. it'll be beautiful weather to get out there and enjoy a wonderful afternoon. Doors going to open at 2.30. 2.30 and, and uh, start at 3. Start playing the music and dancing at three. Yes, yes. That sounds fun. Why did you kind of go with that, uh, this kind of event? It's a little bit different than what you've done in the past, but it's going to be, you know, mostly fun, a festive uh, kind of get-together. Exactly. Well, we love music, and um, we just thought that it would be fun. We like to have diversified programs, mm -hmm. so not just having a speaker, 
but having people getting up and engaging them in this opportunity of not just sitting and watching. Of course, there'll be the demonstration, but then t Mel will call them and who doesn't like line dancing at a right. party? <laughs> Absolutely. Clubhouse One's a great place to do it as yes. well. Let's yes. Let's talk about the club, the Shalom Club. You've been together for quite a while now, and you and Paula Kruger, unfortunately she couldn't join us today, but you yeah. all have been doing a lot of hard work in trying to get people together, and it's for everyone. Absolutely. And our philosophy basically is what it says on our plaque, which is right outside the door of Clubhouse One. Mm -hmm. um, we really want people to make friends, meet old friends, um, trying to have meaningful, diverse programming and welcoming everyone, all different cultures and religions, so that everyone feels welcome. Right. Why was it so important for you, and especially Paula, to kind of put this together? You've been around for how many years now? Uh, well, um, the original person who started the programming named uh, Nate Kovetny, um was our original uh, president. Mm -hmm. Now he's the co-president with Paula. And um, he started this about four years ago okay. and called it the Shalom Club because it's universally known uh, for peace. And it does, you can say hello and goodbye, but mm -hmm. peace is the main idea. And then we have the uh, the dove with the olive branch and that's universally uh, a symbol of peace as well. Right. Shalom kind of reminds me of the word aloha. Yes, it can be exactly. Love and it can mean brotherhood and 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 hello as well and exactly. goodbye and goodbye. It's yeah. it's many many things right. and it's people understand what it what the uh, basic word means. Right. Yeah. What other events do you have coming up? I know you're always keeping busy and you're always looking for opportunities to uh, bring information and events to your members and to uh, people that might just want to come by and be a guest and see exactly. what it's all about. Exactly. So next Sunday, of course, we do have our dance program. And then in June, we're going to be having a picnic outside. Okay. So last time we did that, we had a lot of music. People were dancing, love hot dogs and drinks and other you know kinds of things to eat. Um, then in July, we're going to be having uh, something called Yiddish is Alive and Well. And then we are already set up for September. Big surprise, we're having a woman who was a child prodigy on the violin. And she was there for our program on violins of hope. Mm -hmm. So if people remember her, she was very engaging. And uh, we're going to be having her in September. And we have a lot of things planned already for those first three months. Wow. So you basically have the whole year planned out already. Yeah, we like to think ahead and have it as diverse as possible. Right. Well, we welcome you to, uh, well, we welcome you always on our program to, you know, tell us about many of these events you'll have throughout the year. But mm -hmm. this event is going to be on Sunday. That's going to be on May 7th. And that's going to be at Clubhouse One. They're going to open the doors about 2.30. And then at 3 o'clock, they'll start their line uh, dancing and calling at that yes, time as well. exactly. And uh, it's a great time for you to meet nice people. If you have any uh, questions or you want to uh, give them a call, you can always call 510-917-1486. Or you can email Paula at paulakruger99 at gmail.com. Cindy, thanks so much for joining us on the program. Enjoy your Sunday afternoon, and yes. we look forward to, see, to hearing back. You know how it went. I'm sure you're going to have a great time. Thank you so much. We expect a lot of people. It should be fun. Absolutely. Thank you. Be sure and join them. That's going to be on Sunday at 2.30 in Clubhouse One. Hey, we'll be back to wrap up our program right after this break. people with low vision. Sometimes reading can be a challenge. With OrCam Read, just point and click. Read at work. Read a recipe. Read a magazine. Read anything you want. OrCam Read. Who 
Rise Radnet, you've probably heard our name and seen our commercials, but you still might not know who we are. Radnet is the largest provider of outpatient imaging services in the United States, with over 8,000 employees and almost 400 imaging centers in seven states. Likely, if you have had diagnostic imaging, you have experienced Radnet's high-quality, cost-effective imaging services. With 35 years of expertise, Radnet is leading into the future with advanced technology and the very latest AI technology. We are positioned for the future of healthcare. Radnet, leading radiology forward. Hey, Laguna Woods Village residents. Did you miss a broadcast of your favorite village television show? Don't worry, the solution to your problem is just a click away. The Village Television YouTube channel has got you covered. From board meetings to fitness classes, to shows like This Day, Let's Talk Tech, or Tales from the Woods, you can watch every broadcast anytime on YouTube. Catch up on all the latest and greatest shows and events happening in Laguna Woods Village on our YouTube channel, Village Television. Well, we have the Memorial Day. This is the annual Memorial Day golf tournament and dinner. That's going to be coming up here pretty soon. That's Saturday, May 20th. And this is brought to you by the Foundation of Laguna Woods Village. All proceeds uh, from the tournament do go to the Foundation of Laguna Woods Village. Their entry fee is $150 per golfer and $50 for non-playing dinner guests. You know, realize that this is your round of golf and they always have wonderful uh, gifts and guests uh, that uh, play in these tournaments and then of course dinner as well. Give them a call there. Give Tony a call at 949-212-3715 or give David a call at 949-283-9646. Now it is coming up pretty soon. That's going to be Saturday, May 20th. So be sure and give them a call and get your spot into that golf tournament. And that's going to be a fun time for everyone. And we're going to have some, hopefully some great weather on that at that day as well. We're also going to have the Renaissance Fair, which is also a really good time. And that's going to be over there at the Equestrian Center. That is going to be on the same day, Saturday, May 28th. May 20th, I'm sorry. And that's going to be at 11 o'clock. And that's located right on the corner there at El Toro Road. They're asking for $10 at the door. And they're asking you to bring, bring cash. And that's going to get you to experience Shakespeare, dance, music. They have wares by the village clubs and artists, and they're going to have a blacksmith even, and they're going to have some games and night horses in Queens Court as well. So be sure and be a part of that. That's May 20th. You can go down to the Recreation Department and get more information, or you can just show up and bring yourself a $10 bill and enjoy the wonderful afternoon. That's going to be 11 o'clock until 3 p.m. over there at the Equestrian Center. Well, speaking of uh, some wonderful weather, well, let's take a look outside before we let you go. It's going to be a, a beautiful day here until lunchtime. If you're watching our live program in the morning, uh, look at those beautiful clouds and the beautiful sky out there right now at about 928. And we're going to have temperatures in the 60s and then some uh, lower temperatures in the 48 and 50 range overnight. So uh, great temperatures for the next couple of days. Well, that'll do it for our program today. I'm Paul Ortiz. Thanks for joining us for the last half hour of your day. And we'll be rebroadcast this afternoon at 1230 if you're watching our live program and at 5 o'clock. And, of course, you can always go to our YouTube channel, Village Television, to see all of our programming right here on Village Television. We'll see you again tomorrow.